I will split these questions up onto individual pages. Um, but let's just see what we have here. So we've got, okay, so there's going to be three questions in total. I think there's also a second part, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, there's also going to be a, um, a, a last part over there. I just couldn't fit that in. So we have, it says that arrestor beds are used to help moving trucks to come to a stop when their brakes fail. I don't know if you've seen these before. Um, if you're driving in certain areas in the country, um, on the side of the road, there's like a big sand pit. And that is just to help trucks who are coming down steep roads and sometimes the brakes of those trucks fail. Um, so for example, this truck is supposed to keep going like this, but maybe the truck realizes or the truck driver realizes that the brakes are not working. So instead of letting the truck go all the way down like this and picking up speed and causing an accident, what they're supposed to do is to go off the side of the road into a piece of sand or like a long patch of sand like this and that sand slows the truck down and brings it to a stop um, without causing any significant damage or anything like that. Okay, so the first question says state the work energy theorem. So let's just quickly look at that, the work energy. Well, that is from the formula W net equals to delta EK. That's the work energy. So it says that the network on an object is equal to the change in kinetic energy. And then we should say of the object, or you could have said is equal to the um, object's change in kinetic energy, or of the object. So here they say that the truck with the failed brakes passes point A at the beginning of the arrestor bed at a speed of 33 meters per second. Okay, so the truck hits this area at 33 meters per second. The frictional force in the truck is 31,000 newtons while the truck moves up the arrestor bed. Okay, ignore the rotational effects of the wheels. Um, give a reason why the network done on the truck while moving on the arrestor bed is negative. Okay, so let's just look at the basic formula of work. We know that it's work is equal to force multiplied by displacement multiplied by cos theta. Now, if we wanted to look at the net work, then you could look at the F net, for example. Okay, now we know that when the truck reaches this area over here, it is going to be going in this direction, but the F net, the overall forces acting on that truck, which would pretty much be parallel gravity as well as friction, those forces are going to be acting in this direction, okay? And so the object, so the object is going this way, but your net force is acting left. So the angle between your force and your direction of motion is 180 degrees. And so if you have an angle here of 180 degrees, then that's going to be negative. And so this whole term is going to end up being negative. That's one way of giving. So, so, so if, you, if, if you chose that one, you could say um, that F net in opposite direction to the displacement. You could also say, because we know from the formula that W net is equal to delta EK. Now remember that delta EK is your final kinetic energy minus your initial. Now remember, when you when you have a truck that is going through an arrestor bed, it is going to come to a stop. Okay? Um, there we go, to come to a stop. So your final kinetic energy is going to be uh, zero, your final kinetic. Your initial kinetic energy is going to be some value, some number. Okay? And so this whole term is going to end up being negative. So your W net is going to end up being a negative. And so you could also say, so that's one option. Your other option is you could say um, change in kinetic energy is negative. And for that reason, your W net will be negative. 
All right, so with this question, I will show you, um, okay, I'll tell you now what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show two different methods. Well, not two different methods, but um, there's two slight different things that some learners like to do and some learners prefer a different way. Okay, so it says use energy principles. So when they say energy principles, that could be the W net equals to delta EK formula, or it could be the WNC equals to delta EK plus delta EP formula. Okay, I'm gonna use this one, um, but I'll show you two different ways of handling W net that learners that I've seen learners like to use. So it says use energy principles to calculate the minimum length of the arrestor bed. So that's how long this part needs to be um, in order to bring the truck to a complete stop. Okay, so, okay, so as I said, we're gonna use W net equals to delta EK. If we do a free body diagram while the object is going up here, um, there's definitely gonna be friction that is due to the sand and there's gonna be some type of gravity parallel Okay, so there's gravity parallel, whoops, let's say F, G, parallel. And that is, and then there's obviously gonna be normal force and gravity perpendicular. There will be no applied force. Why would the truck driver put their foot down on the petrol if they're trying to slow down? And there won't be any brakes. Um, why? Because the, the brakes have been, the brakes have failed. Okay, so in your W net, the only forces you are gonna use are gonna be those two. Now, here's the first way of doing this, and then I'll show you a second way afterwards, okay? So the first way is that your W net will be broken up into W of the FG parallel plus the W of the friction, okay? And then you make that equal to the delta EK. So you see what I did? I broke up the W net into the individual Ws that we have on our free body diagram, okay? Now remember the formula for W is F X cos theta. So I'm gonna go use this for each part now, for the WG par for the FG parallel and for the friction, okay? As I said, I will show you a different method after this where you change this to F net and some X and cos theta. That's another way we'll do it, okay? So I'm gonna go and use this formula now for each of these parts. And so FG parallel is gonna be, um, or the W of parallel will be FG parallel times by X times by cos theta. Okay, that's this part for the W parallel. Then I'm gonna say plus, now I'm gonna do the same thing, but for the friction. Wait, I wanna make sure you guys get this, hold on. W, FG parallel, plus W of the friction equals to delta EK. Now this part is gonna be written as this. FG parallel delta X cos theta plus. Now I'm gonna do the friction one and I'm using this formula because that's the formula for work. So I'm using the friction force delta X cos theta. So that is that part over there. And then I'm gonna make that equal to delta EK which is a half MV final minus a half MV initial. And then remember the squares. Okay, now remember to calculate FG parallel, we use MG sin of the angle of the slope, which is 28 degrees. So I'm gonna move this over here. So we're gonna take the mass, which is 30,000 times by 9.8 times by the sin of the angle. And now that's only that part. Then I need delta X and then I'm gonna say cos 180, why? Well, the object's moving in this direction, but the gravity parallel is acting in the opposite direction. So that's gonna be cos of a 180 degree. Because remember, when you use this formula, the theta angle over here is the angle between the direction and the direction of the force. And then we're gonna say plus, now the friction force is 31,000, don't say negative, not when you're using this formula. You keep the force a positive, but this part is what becomes um, cos 180 and that could make it a negative, okay? Um, and then the delta X and then cos 180. Why cos 180? Because the direction of the motion is going like this, but the friction force is acting to the left. Okay, and then you're gonna make it equal to zero minus. Why did I say zero? Because the final velocity will be zero because the truck is coming to a stop, and they also tell us here, to a stop. Then for the original, 
uh, or the initial, I'm going to say half mass, which is 31,000, sorry, 30,000. The initial velocity was 33 meters per second. So I'm going to say 33 and then squared. Okay. And so your unknown now would be delta x. So let's go solve it. And then I'll show you the second way that you could have used this formula as well. So what I'll go do now is I'm just going to go type all of this plus all of that on the calculator. So that's going to be negative 169024.6395, and that would be delta x. And then I'm going to type this on the calculator, and that's going to be a negative value, uh, 1633. 5000. Okay, the two negatives would cancel, and then to get x by itself, you would obviously just divide, and you should get a final answer of, sure, 96.64 meters. Okay, now if you want me to show you the second method, where I'm still going to use this formula, but I'm just going to do it in a slightly different way, okay, then let's keep going. Okay, so the second way that some learners like to do this is to change the W net. So instead of expanding it into all the different works that I, the way I did it, um, they'll change this and they'll just use this formula. So if it's W net, then they change it to F net delta X cos theta. You see, so instead of, instead of breaking up the W net into the W parallel and the W friction, they just break it up into F net. Okay, and then that's going to be equal to delta EK. Now in the F net part, um, you only have these two forces, but you're not going to make them negative. Um, so you're going to say that your F net is going to be FG parallel um, plus your friction force. And then you're going to say delta X, and then you're going to say cos theta equals to uh, delta EK. Okay, so your FG parallel is going to be um, MG sin theta. So I'm just going to say, um, okay, let's write it over here. So we're going to say, um, th what was the mass? 30,000 times 9.8 times the sin of the slope. Okay, and then you're going to say plus the friction force, which was 31,000. Now together, this together is acting down the slope, but the object is going up the slope. So you're gonna say delta x over here, and then your cos theta will be cos 180, because the object's going up the slope, but these forces are acting down the slope. And then you're gonna say equals to zero, because the final velocity is zero for this ek part, and then minus the initial uh, kinetic energy, which would be half 30,000 times 33 squared. Okay, and then um, I'm just going to go type all of that on the calculator. Okay, and that's going to give negative 169024.6395. Um, and then on the right hand side, we end up with negative 163355. Okay, and then if we get x by itself, we end up with the same answer, 96.64 meters. Okay, so the difference was just the way you handle F, uh, W net. Okay. This one says, which arrest a bed, ascending or descending? Oh, sorry. The diagram below shows the same truck entering a descending arrest a bed, inclined at 28 degrees. The initial speed of the truck and the everything, everything is the same as it was before. Which arrest a bed do you think would be able to stop? Okay, what do you think? Just without like, if you just think about it like from a logical perspective, do you think that it would be easier for the truck to stop when it's on a downhill like this or when it's on an uphill um, like this one? So it's definitely going to be easier to stop a truck on an uphill, but let's look at the reasons why. So if we had to do a free body diagram over here, this truck is going to have the friction force of the sand, um, but it's going to have parallel gravity acting down the slope. Remember, parallel gravity always acts down the slope. You're going to have gravity perpendicular, and you're going to have normal force. When it was going 
when it was rather doing when it was rather going um up the slope then your your uh, free body diagram was the friction force but then it was also gravity parallel and so you see both the friction and the gravity parallel were working together to slow the truck down whereas now the friction force is trying to slow the truck down, but the gravity parallel is actually going to make the truck speed up. And so it's going to be a lot more difficult to try stop that truck if it's on a downhill like that. Okay, and then it says explain the answers. Explain in terms of the forces. So if it's on the descending, we can say that only friction acts in opposite direction of motion whereas fg parallel acts in same direction of motion okay uh, this one if it's an ascending which is one that goes like this we can say both friction and um, fg parallel act in opposite direction of motion. Oh, and let's also not forget to write the answer. Uh, which arrestor bed? Ascending will be able to stop the truck in a shorter distance. Ascending. That's the answer. And then this is the reason that we gave. Okay.